Um, sisters, I was going to give a reminder, but I think maybe I'll give you guys a piece of advice. Maybe the reminder is the advice, but um, I thought I'd speak to you guys like a brother. Because sometimes, you know, you give a reminder, it's just more like people attend, take the reminder, and they leave. So um, I thought I'd give you guys a piece of advice. Some of you guys may have heard it before. But I've just seen it happen so many times because of naivety, okay, and lack of experience how to deal with these kind of situations. And, um, and because of that, you see a very good sister, you know, Allahumma Barik, she was a wonderful individual. And then because of some of her surroundings and her being naive when being around certain individuals, things start going really, really wrong, okay? Um, you know, sisters, you guys have to understand, not everybody wants khair for you guys. And that's the reality of it. Sometimes you find people around you, yani even though from the apparent, they, they act like they want khair for you, but the reality is they don't. You know, there's a very powerful statement that Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu ta'ala anhu he mentioned. He said, the zaniya, the fornicatress, she wishes that everybody else was like her as well. Everybody else around her was a fornicatress. <coughs> the shaitan got the better of her. She's now looked at society in a certain way. And it's very, very painful because she's the only one there who's being looked at in that particular way. And because, okay, she's being looked at in such a way, she doesn't want to be the only person. So she wants to drag everybody with her as well. She wants to drag everybody with her. And of course, she's not going to make it apparent. And sometimes people think that in order to find out that so-and-so is a person of falsehood, that they have to make it clear. No, they don't. And that's the reality. Like even the shaitan, if you think about it, inni lakum min nasihin. He swore by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He done qasam. Inni. If you just look at this ayah, it has so many ta'kidat. It has so many, you know, um, um, methods of showing, you know, the ta'kid. That, how, how can I maybe put this in the English language? Emphasis. Yani there's a lot of emphasis on, no, I'm the one who is a sincere advisor for you. And when you study the Arabic language, you find that inni, again, this is a bit of ta'kid. La, again, there's another one. La min nasihin and so on and so forth. But ala kulli hal, just this ayah has so much emphasis that he's saying to them, I'm a sincere advisor. I want khair for you. This is how the shaytan was speaking to them both. And likewise, the one who just comes and starts rubbing themselves onto you, it's not going to tell you that I'm here to misguide you. And my sisters, like, you have to understand that it's sometimes one wrong move that could be the reason as to you know one thing leads to another and before you know it you're like in so much darkness today we're dealing with a completely different battle as well like a completely different monster this monster of social media which has opened a very different door and I'm going to come to a point that is going to maybe shock a couple of you guys there's many sisters that I've personally known okay um, mashallah tabarakallah yani, they were jilbabis some of them were even niqabis and we know that if a sister she wears these type of clothing a lot of the time she's not going to get the attention that sisters who are maybe half naked are going to get because she's covered and this cover that we as sisters wear, not me, not me, but you know, we as sisters over here, um, is meant to be there to kind of like protect us from the opposite gender, right? So, like I've seen too many sisters who I personally knew because of what they looked at, not because there was people around them who were blabbing in their ear, but because of what them looking at something it put disease in their heart, and then one incident led to another. 
one incident led to another. This is why Raghib al-Asfahani rahimahullah ta'ala, he said something very, very powerful. And I had to ask you to read it so many times, subhanAllah, to put two and two together with the situation that we are living in today. He said, لَيْسَ إِعْدَاءُ الْجَلِيسِ لِجَلِيسِ بِمَقَالَةٍ أَوْ بِفَعَالَةٍ فَقَطْ One doesn't become affected only due to what people say around him and what people do around him. That's not the only way a person becomes affected. He said, بَلْ بِالنَّظَرِ أَيْضًا but also a person becomes really badly affected due to what he looks at. Because as the roadman, you know, we hear these statements all the time, right? I heard actually on the streets. What the eyes can't see, the heart can't desire. What the eyes can't see, the heart can't desire. This is why even Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah ta'ala, he says, غض البصر أصل أصيل في حفظ القلب Lowering your gaze is from the greatest of fundamentals of preserving your heart. Because if you can't see it, then how is that desire, that urge going to enter into your heart? So a practicing sister who wears her jilbab or maybe even wears her niqab, how does she turn from being like a person like this and then she goes and becomes a person who is sleeping around with the opposite gender? How does that happen so quickly? Wallahi, my sisters, I've seen sisters take off their hijab not because of people being around them. She may have been a sister who is just secluded in her room all day, every day. She comes and straight away she goes inside her room. She's sitting inside of her room and she's just on her phone. You know, back in the day when we had these very, very big computers, these dull computers, some of you guys may remember, or I don't know if you guys were too young to maybe see this, but you had these very big computers with big backs. Do you guys remember these computers? Dell computers. If somebody wanted to do something haram, it would be more difficult than what it is today. Because these big computers are where? They're in the living room. Huh? If he's doing something he shouldn't be doing and somebody comes past, he's going to try and switch it off. But today, if you think about it, it's become so easy to access filth and evil. And I don't even need to explain to you guys how easy it is to access it. So point of the matter is, my sisters, a sister, she begins to look at things. She begins to maybe start idolizing some of these female YouTubers that are there. And then what happens? The urge enters into her heart. She begins to desire these kind of things. Okay? She sees that other sisters online are getting many, many likes. But because she is dressed a certain way, them likes are not coming in. And the reality of the matter is, women love attention. It's very, very ma'roof. A husband, if he's not giving attention to his wife, she's going to try and maybe desire that attention from somewhere else. That's just how Allah, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created them. فَعَلَىٰ كُلِّ حَالٍ She's not getting as much, you know, as much attention. She's not getting these likes. So... As time goes on, in order to increase these likes, what happens? The material that's on her body starts what? Becoming reduced one by one. And of course, the woman who's half naked, the woman who's half naked, the likes that she gets and the attention that she gets is not the same as the woman who's just showing a bit of skin. Of course it's not. The more skin a sister shows or a woman shows, the more attention that she's going to get. Even Imam Al-Gahtani, rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentions some lines of poetry. He says, إِنَّ الرِّجَالَ النَّاظِرِينَ إِلَى النِّسَاءِ مِثْلُ الْكِلَابِ تَطُوفُ بِالْلُحْمَانِ These men who are looking at women, they're like dogs. This is a man saying this. And yes, my sisters, I'm telling you this as a brother. In the Rijal and Nadirin, and it's that those men who are looking at women, they're like dogs. Mithlul kilabi tatufu bil luhmani. Okay? They're like dogs who, when they see a piece of flesh, what do they do? They start going around it, right? They start chasing after it. And then he addresses the man. In lam tasum tilka luhuma usuduha, ukilat bila iwadin wala athmani. If these pieces of flesh are not guarded by the lions, it's just going to be taken like that without a replacement without anything in return. 
And this is how men think. They just want to come after you. They want to like use and abuse you like a piece of chewing gum, chew you and then spit you out. And a lot of the time you find, you know, them contacting you and whatever, because if that individual really wanted you in a halal way, he's going to what? He's going to come straight through the door. He's not going to try and creep through the window. Abedin. فعلى كل حال that's how it starts okay she's still not getting that amount of attention and then more skin starts showing more skin starts becoming apparent and then what happens my sisters the attention increases right the DMs start coming in on Instagram and because she's never been given that attention before she's just blown away she is just blown away Starts getting excited. She starts getting these urges. She begins to hear things that no one's ever said to her. And before you know it, my sisters, they meet up, you see, and then the unexpected takes place. Can you see, my, my sisters, this whole cycle? How it started and how it ended. And wallahi, my sisters, it's happened to a lot of individuals that I personally know. And you think, what happened? Her mother never used to dress like that. Her older sister never used to dress like that. Her grandmother doesn't dress like that. Her aunties don't dress like that. But all of a sudden now, she started dressing a certain way because of what? What she started seeing online. These shayateen that she was looking at, these female YouTubers online, who supposedly do Islamic hijabi tutorials. But in reality, they're there trying to sexualize the hijab. She saw them doing it and the urge went inside the heart. So the point of the matter is, my sisters, be very, very careful. Firstly, with the sisters who are around you. Okay, I'm not telling you to walk around paranoid. No, but our religion, Allah Azza wa Jalla tells us that we need to have precaution to a certain degree. Allah says to us, وَخُذُوا حِذْرَكُمْ Take precaution, be wary. One shouldn't be stupid enough to just like walk around, you know, uh, Drive himself into destruction. Like, ليس الأمر كذلك يعني. One has to be fatin, he has to be smart, he has to be intelligent. ف... And that's one, and also on social media. Really, what you look at, you know, it's just the beginning that sparks the fire. And we know that a small flame can turn into what? Can burn a building. It just starts with a very small flame. And subhanAllah, when that sister reaches that stage because she's already kind of like let herself go that time, what happens? She keeps letting herself go. And one fahisha leads to another, as Ibn al Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned. If she doesn't put it to an end, she doesn't do something about it that very moment, one thing is going to lead to another. 